Okay. So I am, again, so pleased to be welcoming John Beyer here tonight. Um, if you go to John Beyer's website, it's johnbeyer.com, you will see paintings and drawings and photographs and music, and he's illustrated a children's book, and um, the list goes on and on. And I hear he kind of has a side hustle as a carpenter, too. So he is certainly a jack of all trades and um, a Renaissance man, if ever there was one. Uh, I also think he's a bit of a poet. We have on the Camden Public Library program's um, landing page for him on July 1st, if you click on it, there's uh, our page about him, our virtual gallery, and then a link to a Picha Kucha night that he did. Um, and the whole thing, it's, it's, it's beautiful, it's poetry. I encourage you to check it out. Um, so Bayer attended Maine College of Art and graduated with a degree of photography in 1999. He lives in the Midcoast area where he creates his poured marbled paintings, which we're going to learn more about tonight, drawings and photographs. And with that, I would like to turn this over to Mr. John Byer. Hi, thank you so much. Um, yeah, this is the first time I've ever Zoomed. And uh, this is the first time I've uh, actually been out in the public eye. So uh, this is going to be interesting. Um, but I do have a bunch of uh, paintings that I lined up to uh, talk about. And uh, I wanted to talk about the different style that I have there. Oh, Zoom. Hey, good job, good job, okay. All right, sorry everyone with my uh, technology shortfall. <laughs> All right, so this is Fort Blueberry. Um, this is my son. Monroe and Lincoln, and I got a picture here. I don't know if you can see it. My other son, Connor. And, uh, you know, just wanted to show you what I've been up to during this uh, downtime. Um, built a little fort there for my family. Um, so I, everyone's here to see these paintings I do, and I want to tell everyone about them. Um, I lay the canvas flat. And I pour all the paint on. And uh, I'm sure everyone's seen that online where, you know, they got the canvas and they're swirling it around and they pour all the paint on. And, you know, you're like, oh, that's really neat effect. And I always, was, I always liked it too. And I was like, wow, I wonder if you could actually make a painting instead of just looking like a, you know, but blob going every which way that you, you had not, no idea what it was really. It just looked like abstract. I was like, I wonder if I could make it look like something. And so, uh, oh, way back, I went and uh, bought a bunch of paint and had a, my studio in Belfast. And I did one of these paintings, a couple of these paintings. And then the people that own, ran the studio were like, oh, you can't do that anymore. And I was like, oh, no, it's because it smelled up the whole place, like the nail salon down the place and the hair people were like, oh, this is too smelly. So I went off and I uh, decided I needed to get my own studio. And I... I was gonna, I'm going to build my own house so I can do these paintings and I can, you know, f uh, get my vision out there. So this painting here is called Good First Day. And uh, this is a ride home from the hospital going to feed the puppy dogs after my wife gave birth to my son, Lincoln. And uh, I was up all night and it was crisp September, you know, uh, day and uh, yeah, this is this is the ride down Route Seven, and uh, this is another one. This is black eyed, and this one's uh, uh, just a, you know a vase of flowers that I pick out of my backyard. I try try to find things that I know or, or that are around me to paint things, experiences. <coughs> And uh, using that uh, technique, I try to let the the painting happen as it I, as I do it. And as I do it, I use a cup and a stick, and I pour the paint in the cup, and then I just pour it out of the cup. And sometimes there's some you get some on the stick, and you can drip it with the stick. And that's how I make these paintings. And uh, it takes a lot of like planning and uh, I'll do a, like a little pencil drawing on there or a little you know black drawing outline 
and then I fill it in. This is another one. Uh, this is a uh, autumn sky. And uh, this is another, you know, going down the road painting that I did. And uh, it's just another moment that I had, you know, driving home and the sky was just lit up like that. Like it was out of a movie. I feel like everyone has those moments and stuff. And I just try to capture it. So I have other paintings that I do and I like to, you know, experiment and stuff. So this is one of those, this one is called um, Waiting on First Light. And uh, it's just, a, you know, this one's with acrylics. The other paintings that I do where I lay the canvas flat and I pour the paint on, I do, I use enamel oil paints. And uh, this is another one that, uh, thing that I do, I do photography. I actually went to college main college art and I uh, I got a degree in photography and then after I got out of photo uh, you know out of school there was no more <laughs> no more uh, film all the places that developed film stopped developing film and everyone had a camera so it turned into like this big like oh I can't you know do anything with the top photography because a I didn't have any place to get it developed or B, everyone was doing it. So I was just like, oh, you know, I kind of put it on the side burner until I got this digital camera that actually worked like a regular film camera with, uh, with where you could set the aperture and the speed instead of it taking some automatic amalgamated, automatic, you know, camera thing, you know, digital camera. So this is a digital camera, but I can control it. So this is uh, uh, America at home. And I bet everyone's feeling this one, you know, being all cooped up in their houses. And uh, I just wanted to throw something in there to let you know I do some other stuff too. This is another thing that I do. Um, and these are just, you know, things that I, that happened, you know, then how this happened was uh, my wife was a, a hospital librarian in Augusta and she was decommissioning these plastic surgery journals from the 70s and she was like do you want any of these and I was like oh sure of course why not I could turn these into something why not so I got a whole box of these things and all oh, it's old and smelly and open them up and they have all these crazy advertisements no one ever really sees except for doctors it was like advertising scalpels like buy this kind of super awesome sweet scalpel or get your, your own chair like this. I was like, Oh, I'll do something cool out of them. And I, so I made these surgical flowers. I call them turning, turning things into beauty. And then I moved on to collages and I, I just, you know, really started loving it and how you can add layers and meanings without really, you know, it just being about something beautiful. And this is another good one about our state that we're all in here. Does it balance? But back to uh, the marble landscapes. These are, uh, you know, something that hasn't been seen a lot. I, I'm sure there's got to be someone else doing something like this. But uh, I really started focusing on this and putting it out there that, you know, this is the new thing that I'm trying to promote. I got my suit on mean in business here and uh this one's called tiny tree this was a recent one i did called recliner red and i really wanted to kind of revisit when i was in school we do a lot of uh you know uh life drawing and stuff like that so i wanted to revisit some of that and in in my you know portfolio of paintings uh a lot of them are landscapes, so I really wanted to, you know, just do, do a nude. But I really like this one. This one came out real, real nice. And then um, again, the, the flowers that uh, that are themed to mine, you know, they the really just come from the garden, and uh, it's you know something that's around and something that I can find. And uh, this one's called uh, the Stars of May, and it's just the the tulips outside in the early spring 
when the snow first melts. And again, the whole pouring the painting thing, it, it leaves it with that, I mean, you can see it here, the background is, is really like got this texture, you look at it and it's, it's, it looks like it's, it's breathing almost and it, it's popping out. But when you touch it, when you come up close to it, it's smooth as can be, it's like glass, because it's one giant sheet of paint. Because all I do is pour paint on in giant puddles. And that was one of the things um, when we were trying to figure out, you know, what we we're going to call these. I was talking to my wife. I was like, oh, what should we call this style of painting? And uh, I had said to her, why don't we call it puddle paintings? And uh, this is in my other, I, she's like, oh, no, that sounds like something you'd step in. So I was like, oh, all right. So we call them marble landscapes. And, uh, you know, my wife is a big part of all this. She's my number one supporter. And she... She helped me come up with my business plan of, uh, you know, getting my, my work out there. And part of it was, you know, obviously you want to get, you know, your work in a gallery or a museum, but being an entry-level entry artist, you, you know, it's hard to get in there. And I tried my best and sent out resumes and all that stuff and never really got anywhere. So I had to do it on my own. And I thought of a good way to do it was, libraries and I was like well you know eyeballs how many people are going to see this and where are they going to see it and what kind of people do you want to see it and I was like people that go to libraries people that read books people that are looking for knowledge looking for something new and different and that's what I wanted I wanted people to really find it on their own and so I started my own little grassroots library art tour and it sounds backwards but it's really it's really like getting it down, getting the foundation set for something that's gonna be big and that people really, really catch on to. And uh, for the last six years, I've been doing this, I've done over 25 library shows, all in Maine. I was starting this year, <laughs> to, I, had, uh, I had one getting set up in New Hampshire. I was gonna move out and do some shows in New Hampshire, but you know how I went with everything. I actually just had a show in March that I hung on March 14th and the next day we all know how that went. So that's all sitting there. A whole, all my new work is, is in this library down, down South in, in Maine and it can't, no one can see it yet <laughs> for the last four months. This one's called spring burn. And a lot of people in Maine can recognize this scene from, um, you know, right in the right in the spring, everyone's got a bunch of yard waste kicking around that they make a, make into a pile, and then, you know, then right around April or May, they invite everyone to come over and sit around and light it on fire, a big old big bonfire in the backyard, and that was one thing that really drew me to Maine, just that like ability to, to kick back and and live your life. This is another fun one. <laughs> It's called sheep. It's pretty self-explanatory. They're just some super cute sheep. <laughs> uh, another one here is uh, September suns in the fall when the sunflowers come out. I just grabbed a big jar and stuck a bunch of sunflowers in there and painted away. Again with that the technique that lit you, you people think you touch it and they're like, Oh, you must've used a paintbrush, but nope, I didn't touch it or anything. I wish, wish I could let you touch them. Cause then you'd see, but they're smooth as can be. This one's another good one. It's called in the wood amongst the trees. And this is a, uh, you know, just the light that filters through the trees and the shadows that, you know, come drawing you in. This one's called Caption Blue. And this is that in the morning when the everything's super still and the, the shadows are all hold, held, hold everything except for the, the, the far off distant trees that light up with the morning sun. And then obviously the pink. I love that pink. Uh, this is December's Three Blooms. And uh, it was just a bouquet of flowers that came home from uh, 
supermarket. A lot of these are just more stories in them themselves to me. And this one, this one holds a lot of stories to it. This one's called River and Sea. And uh, I don't know if anyone knows Belfast, Maine, but it's, just, it's a little uh, inlet, kind of right in the elbow of Maine. And it's a little satellite for all the towns that are around it. I used to live there and uh, driving to work, there's always two different ways you could go. You could go to Route 7, which is just a regular road, or you could cut around this other way and drive up this road called the Head of the Tide. And it was always so pretty. And uh, I just I just love that little stretch of road there. And this is a, this is a painting of that. And um, it's kind of important because it's, it's where the, the head of the tide comes, where the, the ocean comes and meets the river, the Passaga, uh, I'm not gonna, the Passy, meets the Passy. And so the, 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 the river meets where the ocean, right in this one spot. And twice a day, it all fills in with the sea. And otherwise the river and the, the sea are just meeting right there, swirling around. And if you sit there, you can see people like kayaking up the river when the ocean fills in that little be uh, basin. And there's big trees that lean over the road and it's just a be beautiful spot. So if you've ever, ever been to Belfast, it's over near the rail trail, it's worth a little drive. This one's called Jackson. And again, I try to paint from uh, what I know. And this, this would be a little painting of my house in the woods out in Jackson that I built so I could actually make these paintings, so I could afford, so I could afford to paint these paintings. I don't know, everyone, everyone knows that, you know, rent and all that stuff can take away your free time having to have a job and everything. So this limited my job, having to have a job as much and free up my art. And that was the most important thing to all these paintings. And it's extremely reminiscent of Starry Night, and but it's you know it's something that's dear to me and something I really care about. So it's one thing I wanted to try to get across if I could is that how much I love doing all this stuff. Like I haven't just uh, been doing this since I was you know got out of school or just started it last week. This has been forever. You know since I was a little kid. This is the first thing I you know did that was me you know I could do it good and I just have been doing it ever since I was a little kid this one's called uh the sky is singing and uh there's just been so many times when I get to drive and you get to see these beautiful main suns sunsets and sky that we have here and how they change and uh this is just an another one of those road trips you know going to town and just seeing the most beautiful thing coming over the crest of a, a hill oh this is a big one this one's light of blue this one's down in, in the other library yeah this one's uh oh just when the the light skips across the skips across the ocean there Oh, there's something about the light too. Something about painting light and how light affects things. Here we go. This one's good. Be a bee. <laughs> the little bumblebee on the flower. Most important uh, insect to learn. Oh, here we go. June's offering. So we get in June, we got to uh, get the. Uh, dandelions and the uh, lilacs and the lilacs are so smell so good oh here's another backyard painting this one's called behind the trees and again it's the light that i'm trying to paint i guess is more than anything i i know the 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 way I do it is kind of in, in, intriguing, but all painters and all, all artists are always trying to find that light, that, that feeling in, the, in, the, in that moment. John, I had a question come in that actually pertained especially to the light. 
Um, the comment is from Jim and it says, your use of light and shading is amazing. Do you let the paint dry between layers? No, there's no layers. Right, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, no, I don't, I, I don't paint any layers. I don't let anything dry. I, like I said, it ends up being just one big sheet of paint. And uh, yeah, I have to do it all at once too. That's the other thing. It's uh, an all day thing. So like, I can't stop once I start. And uh, it's kind of like each, each time I pour the paint out is like a, like a jazz song or something like that, you know? And it's like, I'm painting all day these little jazz notes that I'm pouring out of this cup. And the whole painting ends up being this marathon long jazz song. And um, there is no break, there is no layers. It's all one thing. And it's, it's almost impossible for me to explain it you know, we, without saying like magic or something, you know, ethereal that I can't explain, you know? Yeah, we had talked about that you, um, you had some, some footage, like some, some um, time-lapse footage of the actual process. Yeah. And we had, we had discussed, you know, showing it, but we talked about how Zoom isn't such a great format for that. Um, how can people see you doing the paintings? Have you loaded it up on YouTube anywhere? Um, Yep, it's all on YouTube. I have a couple videos that I made. I put the camera on the ceiling and I uh, did a time lapse. So you can see how the sun's like crossing the, the room as I do it and each little pour I do as I'm doing it and it just looks like the painting's growing slowly and yep, that's on YouTube. And uh, uh, there's another one that my uh, wife made for me and she, she uh, uploaded it. So there are uh, other uh, little things, and I think it might be linked to my website too. I believe, and, yes, I believe I remember seeing them on there. Section, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely let you keep going with your slideshow, but we do have a, another question that, that has to do with the painting method. Um, yeah, of course. So Catherine is saying, uh, your work is terrific, which is a lovely comment. Such great variety, seems like you, it really comes from your heart. And then she asks, so are you combining colors in the cup and mixing them up just a little before you pour? Do you use a brush at all and add swirls and small dashes of color after you've poured? Gorgeous. Uh, so yeah, I just, yeah um, no touching, no brushes. And yeah, I just pour the paint in a cup and as it's swirling in the cup, and then I pour it out. Just like those acrylic, uh, uh paintings that they pour where they're just pouring it out of the cup onto the thing and goes Bleh. it's the same thing i don't touch it though and i don't lift it up so it stays it stays in the, all its little puddles and then all the little puddles become one big puddle kind of like life <laughs> how long does it take for the painting to dry weeks so I can't like bust these out either. That's the other thing. Like I'm always trying to like explain like, oh yeah, they're sitting in my studio in the middle of the studio and my studio is not very big, give you. And then no one could touch them. No one could go near them. Cause if they touch them, they'll go bleh, sideways and turn into, a, you know, one of the, you know, just won't look like nothing anymore. And uh, yeah, so I can't really, I can, sometimes I can only do one a week, maybe two a week, every two weeks. And uh, again, that's the other thing, finding that day where you're like, all right, everyone, I'm not doing anything. Like if something comes up, blah, 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 I'm, you know what I mean? Like it's always something, 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 you know, to distract you from it. And they can't, no distractions because. Yeah. <laughs> you have little kids too, and so do I, and I just don't have to do it. It's amazing. <laughs> What, okay, one more question and then I'll let you keep going. So uh, Catherine yeah. asks, how big are your canvases? Oh, so the bigger the better. But then once they get too big, they're almost too hard to reach into to pour the paint on because they're all flat. Um, so this painting right here that we're looking at at this moment is 40 by 40. And uh, the smaller they are, the harder to make it look like something, obviously, because the paint 
always wants to do what it wants to do and you never really can make it want what do what it wants to do you're just kind of helping it and put it on there and you know letting it happen this one here is called russ's point and this is another like almost imaginary view of the same spot over there on the head of the tide road and uh uh, it used to be that that actually that little plot of land used to be called Russ's Point back in the 1800s or so, and uh, they, it somehow got changed to the to the city point. But this is this is just a, one of those m mornings and that where the sun is and the light again is beaming. Oh, this is a fun, and this is a, a one that I uh, repainted in, a, in this style, and uh, I sold the original, and uh, the original I did it in like this more blocky painting style, and uh, I, I just wanted to do it again. It's the Belfast uh, Bonfire, and the story with this one was uh, I was at a party on New Year's Eve, and uh, I was walking home, and I was I was walking home to get something and go back to the party. And I lived in Belfast. And as I'm coming back to the party, all of a sudden there's all these people in the middle of the road and the cops were there and they blocked off the middle of the, you know, middle of town, Belfast. And I was like, what's going on? And someone's like, oh, there's going to be a drum circle. And everyone's kind of hanging out playing drums. I'm like, oh, this is cool. So I go up to the party. I'm like, hey, party, there's a big drum circle outside. So all the party comes down and everyone's banging on these drums and pots and pans and they had this giant drum on wheels and every it was, it was so cool. It's freezing out, freezing up here in the middle of January and uh, January, end of December. Anyway, all of a sudden they're like, all right, everybody. And everyone in the whole little crowd of people starts marching down the hill of Belfast down towards the water where the little pier is there. And there's a little beach and I didn't know it, but they had to set up a big old bonfire and there, there's everyone gathered around it and count down the new years and boom, they lit it off and everyone's banging on the drums and cheering and hugging each other. And it was a real, real, real good time. This one's a portrait that I did and uh, just trying to, just trying to, you know, keep up with, uh, you know, having different things that I'm doing and uh, real hard to, actually make it look like a person when you're pouring it <laughs> uh this one's called uh falling light and this is another backyard painting of a little garden gate as the sun's going down in the fall and again i, I just i'm really drawn to the, the how, how the light affects stuff especially from doing photography and uh and and when i photographed i always liked like the light, like uh, I do these really long exposed photographs and stuff. This one's called uh, Morning's Drive. And on a cold morning, you're heading to work and the, you know, the gray sky is, you're like, oh man, everything's all gray and it's cold out. And then all of a sudden that bit of sky cracks through this, the edge of the, you know, horizon and lights up the whole, whole thing and, you know, it's like, all right, today's not going to be that bad. There's some some golden down the road. There's another one at the at the house. Uh, this is called Paths Day, and this is just uh, looking down the driveway, looking uh, towards the road of my house. Oh, this is a good one. Uh, August blooms, and uh, it's just the the flowers that come out of the garden that at uh you know right that time in august in between that again with the light you know that that shadows that everything lives in and the sky that lifts up lighting up you know the little wispy pink clouds oh this is a fun one the rooster the little uh eggy looking flowers in the old barn it's crowing calling in the morning i just did this one recently here and uh 
Oh man, it's called Quilted in Blue. And uh, it's when you go down and you know grab the uh, the quilt from the, the the bed and you go down the end of the dock and watch the stars the middle of the night with someone wrapped up tight. Here's a nude that I have done and that's uh, lounging in lemon. Another recent one, Bridges. And if you go to Belfast, there's a footbridge there in the foreground and then the other bridge up top. Again, with the, the light and uh, this is back to photography here. Um, you know, other thing that I love to do it was photography and always still enjoy it immensely. And uh, even though I don't have an outlet to sell my photographs or anything like that, I, I just love doing it. And getting out there in the middle of a snowy night with a four foot fluorescent tube light and an extension cord <laughs> under the apple tree. <coughs> Again, to the surgical flowers with all the little surgical implements that make up the petals. Threes committee. Uh, this is a, another long exposure photograph that I did. New in years. <laughs> I really like this one. I took it and uh, just sat on my, sat up there and I finally New Year's came along and I was like, oh, this is going to be a good one. <laughs> And this is another uh, another one on the head of the tide road there, looking up the river. All right, well, that's the end of my presentation. Well, you can uh, you can stop the screen share now if you'd like, and we can go back to our conversation. Uh, there we go. There we go, perfect. So we did have a couple more questions come in. Um, Catherine asks, will all these paintings you're showing us be on your website at some time? Um, most of them are on my website. A uh, few of them aren't. Uh, most of the marble landscapes are. And what I have, what I have actually is a website that I upload my images to. And instead of actually having to go out and purchase prints to sell, uh, it's digital and so the the website called image kind which is linked to my website you can you can go on image kind and they offer uh canvas prints they offer on different papers matted unmatted frames so anyone can go on to that website and pick out what kind of art how big they want it of any one of my uh marble landscapes so basically you have the paintings available and is every all the information about those on the website already or do they reach out to you through email for that information? Yeah, if, if there is something that someone was interested in, the best way to get in touch, uh, yeah, would be email me and, and you know, we could, con you know, get in contact with each other. Um, if there was a question I had, you know, I could answer. I'm, again, I'm trying to be a businessman here, yeah. but I gotta remember, I'm really an artist. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> um, and, and, um, so this is this is the first time that anyone has actually ever really got to see me or uh, know what I'm doing because I have been keeping it under a, the slow burn with the the library show. Normally, someone would come up with a good idea and run straight to the fire. You know, oh, I got to bring this to a gallery and sell it right away. I got this great idea. Well, that wasn't what I did. <laughs> No, I, I appreciate that, you know, you've, you've done the library circuit. And in fact, I, I know you've mentioned it, but John's wife is a librarian. So yes. uh, she knows the struggle is real. And, um, and actually, I also want to mention, um, so John is our, uh, our July, the Camden Public Library's July Artist of the Month. And he has ever so kindly agreed that any purchases that are made, um, the paintings, the prints, any of it, 20% uh, of those purchases during the month of July will go to the Camden Public Library. So if you're thinking about investing in one of his beautiful pieces, please do it in July and we'll all benefit. <laughs> Remember, our public libraries 
all of them are this cornerstone of our society. I mean, like literally, so. And we, we will, we, we hope, we were going to have John in person, a real live exhibit this year, and unfortunately we were not able to. Um, so hopefully we can pick that up next year uh, and, and everyone can come see his work in person. Um, if anyone has any additional questions, now's a great time to type them into the, um, into the chat box. Uh, I have put John's, his website there. So it's www.jonbyrer.com. Um, and Dennis asks, do you do commissions? Yes. Except um, it's hard to guarantee that something would look like what I said it would. <laughs> <laughs> so a normal painter would be like, oh yeah, I can do that. Well, I can do it, but I can't guarantee it. So right. there's a large amount of, because uh, they can go sideways. Like you put too much on, you know, it's just, bleh, you know, someone comes in, uh, I've had a uh, painting on the thing drying and, uh, and pretty much most of them all have a bug in it. But one <laughs> bug landed right in the middle and was like, oh, I got to get out of here. And he just kept taking a left and he just kept going round and round and round and round right in the middle of the painting. The mother nature contributed. <laughs> oh yeah. So, you know, I can't guarantee nothing, but I can certainly accept the, uh, the, uh, the challenge, the challenge. Yes. So Dennis, if you're interested, maybe go visit his website um, or you can always reach out to me at the library and I'm happy to connect you with John. Um, if it, again, if anyone has any questions, we'll, we'll stay on a little bit longer and you can type them into the chat box and I'll get those to John. Um, I, I had a question. So I was noticing you do a lot of landscapes. You seem to paint a lot of things that are around you. Do you ever create imaginary scenes? Do you just start pouring on and see where it goes and then kind of run with it from there? Yeah, I've done that, and uh, it, it's really fun. But it doesn't end up uh, it doesn't end up what what you would think, and uh, it's it usually ends up abstract. Mm -hmm. But the, I actually would do that with drawing more than anything, mm -hmm. which is uh, funny. I would I would I would start I would start a drawing and let it happen that way a lot more. So there's a uh, a lot more of that in my drawing I would say um, so also you've mentioned that you are a father we discussed that briefly yeah. um, has has that has that changed any of your inspiration or influenced your approach in any way have do you ever uh, paint your family oh uh, no I don't get to paint my family that much uh, Kids don't stay still enough long don't enough. Stay still, and they're like almost impossible to paint and not look like some little weird alien. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, no, I haven't really ever uh, you gotten a chance to use my. Uh, I mean, there's been this couple couple times that I got my wife to let me take some pictures, but mm -hmm. nothing that was recognizable or anything, and. Um, no, I, there's, you know, been a few times throughout my stuff with photography that I photographed some of my family and stuff like that. And that was really cool, but not with the, the marble landscapes, the marble landscapes, because um, there's so much planning that goes into it. And I'm so unsure of how it's going to turn out. I don't want to like insult someone by being like, hey, look, I painted you. <laughs> have it be like, uh, yeah, thanks. So I've, I've done self portraits and, uh, I've done another, another portrait of someone there. And I was just like, you know, it was from a, uh, that was from a photograph. So I've actually never had anyone sit for me or anything really. Oh, that's interesting. Um, so I just want to mention, by the way, I don't know how many people on here found out about this program on Instagram, but John Breyer has third over 38,000 Instagram followers. I was shocked when I looked at that number. I thought I was like, is he a rock star? That's crazy. So you no. clearly you clearly have people all over um, that that appreciate your art. Uh, and you mentioned to me a little bit that you enjoy Instagram. Um, oh, yeah. Does it looking at these other these other artists works? Does it 
feel like, does it ever push you to, to try something new? Is that how you stumbled into the? Uh, I stumbled into that actually when I, I got a chance to go to Europe before my wife and I got married, she uh, arranged a trip where we stayed on her, her sister, her lovely, very nice of her to let us stay on her couch or her floor at an apartment, you know, in uh, London. And then we, you know, took a train to Paris and, uh, you know, got to go all over, got to go to Amsterdam, see the Van Gogh Museum. And when we were there, I was, you know, made it a point. I was like, every day we're going to go to a museum. She was like, okay. And she's really a trooper. It brought me every museum she could. We went to all sorts of free ones in London because they were all free. We got the pass in, you know, the Louvre. So I really got to like walk up and stand six inches away from like, you know, Van Gogh's and and I was just like, yeah, I could see what they're, you know, you look at an art history book, you're like, yep. Or, you know, someone shows you a slide. It's not the real, it's not the same thing as standing in front of it. And uh, yeah, that's where I got the idea. Cause I saw all these people, you know, and, and, and plus in art school, you always see everyone splatter and stuff. And, you know, Jackson Pollock, you're like, oh, it's really awesome. It's what a great, cool thing he did. You know, it's, I love it. And then you're like, well, why didn't, you know, ever, you know, why didn't he make it look like something? I was like, oh, I think I could do that. Mm. So that's how it, that's how it kind of came to, came to be for me. Except that was like, what is it? 2020 now? That was like, 14 years ago and I was like oh man I did it and it was like real rough and everything and it looked all weird and I hung it up in a bakery and someone snapped it up and I was like oh that was pretty cool and then the, the and then the, the the place I had my studio at was like oh it smells too bad it's too much smell the hairdresser ladies are saying it smells too bad and you know they got all sorts of funky stuff going on with their hairdo stuff but anyway so I had to, you know, I had to, I had to get my own scene going on to actually fulfill my vision there. Well, that's very cool that you were inspired by the old masters and then you came into oh, it. Oh, yeah. Very cool. um, uh, Marie has asked, would you describe, she says, hi, I love John's work. Would you describe your work as impressionistic? Yeah, definitely. And uh, people are like, oh, Van Gogh, you know, master express. Mm -hmm. uh, but the part part of the actual when you pour it on really gives it that feel because of just the technique of the you know the the painting the paint doing its own thing and uh you know the, the letting it happen kind of thing is lets that impressionistic feel come through so yeah i definitely think it's very impressionistic um and we have another comment that says you use so many mediums um, and your, your mother was a gifted watercolorist. Have you ever worked in that medium? I do. And you, my mom, yes, my mom is very gifted watercolorist and she does these amazing quilts. And, uh, she gave us this amazing quilt on our bed. And it's just like, it, it's like this, like fluid, like pattern that, uh, it's, it's a great, and the watercolors. Yes, I do do watercolors. And uh, I do watercolors and draw and ink. And um, I did um, the Bluto book. We I have, saw that, yes. Yeah, I have a, uh, we have a pug uh, basset hound named uh, Mr. Bluto. And uh, he's super cute. And when he was a little puppy, my wife was like, I should write a book about him. And I'm like, well, I'll illustrate it for her if you do. So she wrote it up. And I was like, oh, great. So, you know, She's all, you know, real quick at her writing. Well, I wasn't very fast at my drawing, so it probably <laughs> took me 10 times longer to draw them than it was for her to write it. But anyway, I, yeah, I did that all in watercolors. And uh, it came, I thought it came out really good. We did, we did actually two of them, The Adventure of Bluto and uh, uh, Adventure of Bluto, Tale for All Seasons. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, and if anyone wants to see more of that um, on John's website, which again, I've listed in the chat group uh, in the box there, uh, you can find out more about that, that beautiful book. I had a chance to take a peek at that. Um, okay, so I have one more question. If anyone else has any more last minute questions, go ahead and type them in now. So again, going back to you being a jack of all trades, um, do you ever have any plans to combine um your music and your art into any sort of like performance thing i mean is, would it ever go in that direction oh the music part of it is hard to 
I thought of different ways that I could do stuff like that. Maybe like I was thinking maybe I can make like a music video and uh, you know, have my music on there. And uh, I haven't done it yet, but I did the test for it where I put a camera on one of the uh, little toy trains mm -hmm. that my son has. And uh, I was gonna put a bunch of paintings in a big circle and have the toy train pointing at the, the landscape. So as it went around in a circle, it was driving around this like s different landscape paintings as it you know drove in its circle and then have my music playing in the background of the video but uh i haven't gotten to it yet <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a fantastic experiment and i hope yeah. you get to it because i'd love to see it I, I got the i got the camera to work and to drive around I, so it works i just have to actually make a g giant ring of paintings and put the track <laughs> together which I'm sure my, one of my sons would help me do, hands down. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again so much. And to everyone who came this evening to listen to John and hear more about his work and see this beautiful, beautiful art in the slideshow, I appreciate you showing up tonight. I know John does too for the support. Um, right. Once again, if you are interested in purchasing any of John's work, he will be donating 20% of it to the Camden Public Library this month, only during July, and we appreciate that so much. This has been a hard year for, for all of us, for nonprofits, for artists, not able to do their shows. This is a great time to support Maine local art. Um, we have comments coming in. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, people saying that they really enjoyed this. Uh, and so if you did enjoy this and you want to share it with your friends, I will be putting it on Camden Public Library Program's YouTube channel later on. All right. So if you ever want to see anything else, go to librarycamden.org. You can see um, John's virtual gallery there and all the other upcoming programs we have. So thank you once again. and Good night, everyone. Thanks, John. Thank you. Bye-bye.